Today what we're going to talk about is the whole notion of doing construction simulation, how we do a 4D simulation, and that's really all about taking our building information modeling uh, model and taking the elements in it and associating it with time. So each of the different elements, trying to figure out where they fall in a task timeline so that we could actually simulate the actual construction process. And we'll show you a tool called Navisworks um, that actually does a very good job of letting us bring in elements from an awful lot of different models and associating them with a task timeline to create an animation of really what the construction process will look like. And that's one of the final steps you'll need for the assignment. Before we dive into that, though, I'd love to go ahead and let's just uh, kind of see what uh, like oh questions people are having about the assignment. Because in terms of completing it, we'll have some office hours just right after this class session today. Again on Thursday night. Again on Friday night. Even on Saturday night, we're going to have some office hours to help people get things finished up. We held off on Sunday night because hopefully you won't need to be here on Sunday night to finish this stuff up because finals are coming up and. You don't want to be holding, holding it off to the end. So if you can come for office hours over the next couple of days, please do to go ahead and get those things finished up. But how about in terms of just as you've gotten going, are there some general questions you're having about like you know what's expected or how far to go or how to approach a specific piece of it? Because I think most of you had a chance to kind of at least sort of look at the role you're going to be playing and sort of figure out what you might be doing. So do we have any questions we can answer for everybody? No, no questions? There's always a question. Yes? Um, Navisworks 2010 is installed on all these machines. If I was doing it on my own machine, I'd just do it in Navisworks 2012. The features are pretty much the same, but I like the interface a little bit better. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. Fortunately, we don't have a backwards compatibility issue like we do like within the Revit models. So 2012 will work with a 2010 model, a 2011 model. Yeah. So. Yeah, you, there won't be any penalty for like uh, working with a newer version. Any other questions? You doing okay in terms of the structural side and what you have to do in terms of doing some basic modeling? Yeah, green building studio and trying to uh, figure out oh, what sort of wall and roof assemblies, what types of design alternatives you'd use and kind of what the energy impact would be. It's kind of what we're focusing on there. Yeah, okay. You'll, yeah, you'll have more questions as you dive on into it, and that's okay. Then let's go ahead and talk about construction simulation and what we want to do there. So again, the idea is we're going to start by opening up a Revit model. I'm just going to open up a Revit architecture model of the building. And then we'll also open up a Revit structure model. And we'll just go through the steps that are necessary to grab the information of the model and put them out in a format that can be read by Navisworks. And let's position Navisworks for you just in the scheme of things. Navisworks is kind of the all-purpose can opener. It, it opens up almost any file type and lets us sort of aggregate some things together. And why it is so important and useful to us is if everyone in the entire world worked in the same software tool, it would be much, much easier to pass things back and forth, but they don't. So you'll be working in your favorite tool. Your structural engineer will work in their favorite tool. Your construction people will want to manage in their tool, and the civil 3D people will want to work in their own tool. You need some common tool that lets us bring all that data together so that we can just sort of see how it all resolves and aggregates relative to all the other pieces. And that's what Navisworks is very good for. It's really just an all purpose, like uh, integrate a lot of different information from other sources together sort of system. To get us started, if you want to follow along, you can open up on the L drive. Or you can even open your architectural model, because it's really what I'm going to open is very similar to the model that you're already working with. I'm just going to open up an architectural model. Like we'll take a look at it here. This is going to be very, very similar. I think it's open. There it is. To your model. I can tell it's a slightly older generation of it, because in the older generations of the model, oh, I can tell by looking at in the floor plans, uh, the bathrooms still have a single wall construction. There's no room for the piping in this earlier model. So in later generations, this wall actually moved forward. But not to worry, it's just another version of the model. It's an earlier version of the model. Okay. So what we want to do is I am going to go through and grab the information in this model, and I want to take it over to Navisworks in this, to this common file aggregator where I can put together a composite model. And to do that, what I need to do is export it from this version. Now, in terms of exporting it, there's a couple things you need to know about. One is 
the information that will be exported is only the information which is currently visible in the view when you're doing the export. So what I like to do is actually sort of go to a 3D view where I see everything. The section box is turned off. The visibility graphics of everything is turned on. to something where everything that I care about is going to be visible. And I'll export from there. Now to help me remember to do that, what I'll do is I actually get create a special view that I'll call export to Navisworks. And there's nothing computationally active about that. That's just to remind me to go there, that I should go to switch to this view so that when you do something like this, if I try to export from a floor plan view, what happens is you get a narrow slice of the model. Remember very early on we talked about a floor plan just being a slice through the model? So if you export one of these views, you'll get a view where it's sliced off at four feet above the, cutting, uh, the floor plane, okay? which probably isn't what you want for doing the construction simulation. So I switch over to the 3D view. And then what I like to do is just actually create one. I'll duplicate that. I'll call it, oh, export to Navisworks 2. And that's just really a matter of convenience for you. There's already an export to Navisworks because as we've been working on the earlier sessions, uh, some folks have already saved that for me. So let's go ahead and create that. Once you have that view, oh, another good thing to look at just to make sure is check the visibility graphics. You really do want to make sure that everything that you care about is, does have the visibility graphics turned on. Now, you can actually use this to your advantage if there's things that you don't care about you can turn them off so that they don't get transferred over too. But everything that you want to sort of care about, you should have the visibility graphics turned on. And once you have that, we can go to the Add-ins tab. Under Add-ins, if Navisworks is also installed on your machine, you'll have some choices for exporting to Navisworks. And here I have Navisworks 2010 as well as 2012. Now, if on your machine you don't have Navisworks showing up over here and you want to add it back in, you could always add it back in after the fact. How it happened that these menu choices are here is that I had installed Revit first and then I installed Navisworks. And when you install Navisworks, if it finds Revit, it puts the add in into Revit. Now, if you've gone through and you've installed Revit architecture and then you put in Navisworks and then you put in Revit structure, It'll be in Revit architecture, but it won't be in Revit structure, because Revit structure came later. So how you fix that, it's actually really easy to fix. But how you fix that, if you want to add another exporter to get pick up another package, what you need to do is actually just go to, oh, it's in your Windows control panel, this place where you add and install programs. So if you go to the control panel, and you say programs, and you want to go through and change the program features, you can scroll on down through the list of the programs that you have installed. And you'll find one that's called the Exporter Plugins. Okay, and if you say that you want to uninstall or change that, it'll open up the installer and it'll give you the option of adding or removing them. So you can say, hey, let's take a look and you'll see all the different ones that are available. So you can see right now it's already installed the Revit architecture and structure ones for me. But if I want to bring a file in from Viz, or if I want to bring a file in from Max, or an older version of Revit, or a MicroStation version, or an old version of AutoCAD, or even ARCHICAD, okay, there's a lot of different plugins. And you can turn on any of these things and install them. All that really is going to do is put the exporter into that program. Okay, so you probably won't need to do that, but I just want to let you know in case the exporter is not showing up how you get to it. So I'll say you just cancel out of that, because most of you won't need to do this. But so yes. No, it, that it does not. It only sends the architecture model. So we're going to do the same thing over in structure. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'll get that architecture model back open again. I'll say export it under the add-ins. We're going to say external tools, and I'll say Navisworks 2010. And I'm going to just put this out there somewhere. I'm going to put it on the L drive so we can all get to it if you want to. I'm going to call this the Office Architectural, I'm going to say uh, Class 3A, just because that's where I think of us in terms of the day. 
and you'll see what it's going to do is export those 1,399 different elements there and write them out to this NWC file. So now what is an NWC file? NWC file is actually a kind of a text file which describes all the different elements that we're looking at right here, but does it in a way that doesn't actually require Revit. So it's all about being able to transfer things in a universal format so that someone can open it up without actually having to have Revit around anymore. Okay? Very much like DWF. DWF did a very similar thing. It wrote things out as a common form where we're describing everything in terms of the, the coordinates that describe the boundaries, some sort of description of the materials, but you don't need the original editor around when you have it as the NWC. Okay, so in fact, NWCs are not a bad thing to share. If I want to give you my file in a way that you could sort of do a simulation on, but I don't want you to be able to change my file, okay, I could give you the NWC, and then you could read it, you could do a simulation using the elements, but you wouldn't actually be able to go back and edit the elements. So that's useful sometimes. Sometimes people like to, consultants often like to share the, the results of their work, but not actually share the source documents of their work. Kind of protects them from liability and all sorts of different reasons. So let me go ahead and close that on down. We are next to go over to Navisworks. And Navisworks, again, is the can opener that's going to integrate together all the different uh, uh, file formats from different application programs and tools. So here's Navisworks, and let's let open it up, and uh, we'll start by just kind of adding in our file. So here we are, we're in Navisworks. Right now we're not looking at a whole lot of anything right now. It's a big blank set. Let me go ahead, I'm going to close down this timeliner window just to kind of make a little more space for ourselves right now. We'll get back to that one in a little while. It all starts with doing something called opening the file. So the very first file we bring in, we open. The second file, the third file, the fourth file, we append. Okay, so open the first one, append the second, third, and fourth. So I'll say open. And I'll go on out there and I'll find that NWC file, that Navisworks cache file. Say open it. And it'll bring it on in, and there is my model file. Now let me uh, kind of pop back over here and we'll take a look at it, see if we can sort of understand it a little bit. Over here in this area called the selection tree, and if you don't have a selection tree, let's talk about how you get one. I'll even close the selection sets. Selection tree, if you open it, gives us a hierarchical view of the entire project and all the elements in it. This is the office architectural file. And if we expand on that, you'll see we can highlight specific things. I can highlight the entire model. I can highlight level one or level two or level three or the roof level, if I want to only sort of hope focus on a specific piece of it. I can, for example, choose level one, and if I right click, I can do something like, oh, hide the things that are not selected right now. Okay. And what that's going to do for us, let me kind of pop back out. I don't want you to be blue. And I'll roll on over a little bit further. Or I can orbit if I prefer. I can go ahead and take a look at all the elements. And all I've really done is just scalped off the upper surface right now. So that's useful just for being able to sort of explore the model and being able to see into a model. And this one's not incredibly interesting right now because it's only level one. But if I had love, uh, the structural model in here and I was trying to like I'll line things up, it's helpful to be able to actually see inside the model. I'm going to go ahead and I'll uh, change that instead. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to turn off the unselected hidden and that'll bring back the whole model again. So I got that first floor model. If you want to, you could also expand down into the different levels and you'll see a list of all the different elements that are there. Now, this list of elements is not exactly what I would call well organized. Okay, because if I go through and select the different things, or I shift click and select a whole bunch of them, I can get individual things, or I can select a whole bunch and get more and more of them, but it's really there, and it's almost like in the order in which they got created. I'm not sure that's exactly what it is. I can't actually tell you precisely what the order is in which things appear in here, but all these different elements are here, and those are a bunch of things that are selected right now. I can sort of rotate it around and try and find where those things are. There they are. It looks like they're over on the other side of the building. 
Or if I want to, again, I could always say unselected hidden, and that'll show me just specifically the elements that we selected. We'll turn that back off again. Now what you're going to find pretty quickly is that it's easy to get the elements in the Navisworks. Going through and selecting elements within Navisworks is where all the challenge comes. And because of that, we're going to teach you a very specific trick to make it a little bit easier to select things in Navisworks. But once you get things in the Navisworks, we could try to go through and find them by looking at things over here in the tree and trying to like navigate down to where we can see the different elements that we're interested in. But it gets to be tricky sometimes. Because as we're working with the different elements, some things are on level one, some things are on no level. For some reason, handrails, railings, and stairs are on no particular level, except the grid lines are on no level. But it doesn't always do what I'll call an intuitive job of putting things into the different levels. So I don't like to select very much in terms of what's going on over here. So I find it it's a little bit hard. I, I know my Revit model. I don't know the way it's categorized things over here so well. So I have a little trouble with that. But We'll get back to that in just a minute. Okay, let me go ahead and bring in another model. So that's our architectural model. Let's bring in the structural model and see what that one looks like instead, or bring it in there and aggregate it together to create a composite model. So I'm gonna close up Revit Architecture, and instead I'm gonna go through and open up Revit Structure, and I'll bring that model across too. So here we are in Revit Structure. Theoretically, I'm a different consultant working in a different office right now, but I'm going to also export things as an NWC file so that someone who's going to aggregate the things together can bring them together and kind of bring them into one place. OK, so Revit Structure. Again, this has Navisworks installed. Let me go ahead and open up the structural. That's also out on the L drive if you want to grab it. This is a version of the structure. Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of like the one. It's a little off in terms of it doesn't have all the bracing and some things like that in it. But it's one version of the structure. This has a steel and steel beams and a little light frame uh, like web joists to hold up the floors. It's sort of another way of doing it. I can shade that maybe so you can see it a little bit better. Maybe not. Let's see, those web joists are pretty uh, transparent, so you can't see things all that well. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at the little Revit structure. I could go through and make some changes to this structure. Actually, through the day, we've been making changes through it the entire time. So, oh, for example, I'll put them bracing in, something like that, just as a starting point. But you can go ahead and uh, make some changes to it. I've been adding uh, foundations to the day, and it looks like those are all fully added now. So I'll put a couple braces in here. I'll just, uh, I don't want K braces there. I'll do, oh, like a, how about a nice hollow steel tube? That'll be pretty good. 3D snapping. Come here. Oh, I'm very, oh, there it was, right there. It's the midpoint. Let me zoom on in, see if I can get any closer. I don't kind of want that end point. I really want the midpoint. Yeah, I'm going to settle for the end point for right now as a starting point. Okay, so I got some bracing in there. But anyway, I'm going to go through and export this thing too. Now, in terms of exporting, I'm going to bring it in there in just a second. And what we're going to find is actually that you know this isn't quite aligned to the other model. They're off by a little. So. It's actually very, very helpful to go through and in your Revit models, go through and include some sort of element which is common between the two that actually has some sort of well-known common relationship to help you line up the different models. So grid lines, sadly, even though they would be the perfect thing to bring across, don't get into Navisworks. They don't come into Navisworks. So I'd love to kind of bring the grids in. Or at least they're not, I take the fact they're there. They're just not visible in a way that I can use them to align in 3D views. So what I'm going to do here, just to help myself out, is before I bring it in, just to sort of help out a little bit, I'm actually going to put in a couple of, oh, model lines. Let's talk about what they are. Model lines are lines which are carrying, what, 
they're not necessarily real objects, but they're lines that get carried apart as part of the three across as part of the three D information. Okay, and it would actually be helpful to actually put in a couple lines, maybe right here along that column line and right here along that column line. That'll just help us figure out where the center lines of those columns are, which will then help us align things in case things get out of alignment. So let me do that just as a little uh, preemptive measure, because I know it's going to come in handy in a little while. Where model lines are showing up right here. Actually, let me expand that window so the toolbar looks a little bit better. There's model lines. Model lines have a location you put them on. And you can put a model line, for example, right here. I could also go ahead and put a model line right here. And what am I doing? I'm really just trying to create something that will transfer across into the NervousWorks model, model so I can use it as a point of alignment between the two different models. Okay, So that'll come across as a piece of 3D information. So there's the model line showing up in the 3D view. What I am going to do now is export this thing as a NavisWorks cache file. So I will do the same sort of thing. I'll go to add-ins, external tools. I will go to NavisWorks 2010. Oh, same thing here. I should go through them before I get too far. You know, go to a 3D view that I've set up that includes all the elements, because otherwise you won't get all the elements you want. Choose the elements you want to export. Choose NavisWorks 2010. And I will say that I'm going to take it to Office Structural, and I'll call it Class 3A. NWC. Save that away. Okay, you'll see this only has about 814 elements in it. Okay, so again, the scenario is the architect was off working in one office, the structural engineer was off working in a different office, the land surveyor and whoever's planning all the site works is working in a third office, the MEP is in a fourth office, and we got to get all this information back together into a single format somewhere. So I got that one out. Let me go back over to Navisworks. And now the model integrator, the person who's ultimately responsible for getting all this stuff and tying it together, typically someone you'll call like a BIM manager or uh, something like that for the project, will go through and they'll append in the structural model. Okay. And what has just happened is sort of an incredibly common thing to have happen. You might notice that uh, we're a little out of alignment. Okay? And that's actually sort of a really common thing that happens an awful lot. When we bring things across, we often sort of get out of alignment. It happens because if, we don't, if we're not all incredibly careful to make sure we're all using the same origin to origin linking, okay, someone's file just has a different origin and you have to get them back into shape in terms of where they want to be. So let's talk about how you might do that. I'm looking at it over here. I'm looking at it in 3D. I actually, you can sort of see what I need to do. I sort of need to get that corner kind of right about over there. So I need to pull it uh, oh, to the south a little bit and to the east a little bit and kind of get it in shape over there. Now, if you can measure and sort of figure out exactly what the distance is, you can go through and enter this numerically. What you can do is choose a model. For example, I can choose the structural model. and. Let me show you where this is if you don't have it available yet. There's something called the Object Manipulation Tools. You can right click on the toolbar and bring up that palette. And if you go through and choose, I can actually put in there an X value, a Y value, and actually translate this thing around. I can move it around in space. So that's one way to do it. You can do it numerically. And if you're good, you can sort of actually uh, measure and figure out how far off that thing is. If you don't have access to the precise measurements, you can, though, go ahead and do this visually, too. And how you might do that is you might turn this to wireframe mode. Okay, That's in a perspective view right now. Let me see if I can turn off the perspective view. I don't want my perspective, and it's turned on right now. And i got to remember which of the different like uh, funny tools it is that turns that back off. Oh, I always set viewpoint up. Nope, display. There's one button I'm looking for, and I'm not seeing it right offhand about perspective. We'll find it in a second, or not. 
So it's, there's one where you basically choose whether or not it's in perspective or not. It's a viewpoint setting. I should be able to there. save viewpoints, look from, rendering, display. There it is. Actually, I'm turning that on, right? <laughs> not a good thing to do. Let me go to viewpoint uh, navigation tools. I'll turn it to orthographic. Orthographic just squares it out. That's all I was trying to do. Okay, here's what I want to do. I basically want to move that. I want to move that so basically, oh, these column lines are right on top of something in the uh, like a architectural model. I can either move the architectural model onto the structure or move the structure on top of the architectural. Doesn't really matter. Whichever way sort of works. You probably want to go for whichever one has the most models that are in alignment. Stick with that as your base point and move the others. So what you can do is once you have the structural model there, you can choose the to translate the item that's in the object manipulation. And if you choose that, you'll actually see there's not only the numeric values that we can put in there, but there's a little widget here that lets us pull things around. And the idea now is what we'd like to do is just sort of pull one right on top of the other. If you zoom on in, let me zoom on in. I want to sort of do it in a way that I can still get where that con little widget for controlling things is. It's right here. You can get pretty darn close. But this is where it would be very, very helpful to actually have a set of lines in the architectural model and a set of lines in the structural model that are actually right on top of each other. That way you're certain to be able to get them right on top of each other. But that's all alignment, and there's a whole art and science to doing that. But let me uh, pop back out. I'll say that we're no longer moving things. And hopefully I have these two things pretty much in alignment right now. I can even go back and turn it back to a shaded view. 